It is a sea snake of the Laticaudia genus, a reptile which evolution has returned to the sea, adapting its anatomy to the new medium. One and a half meters in length, it hunts fish by surprising them in their lairs and injecting its deadly venom into them. Its flattened tail serves as a fin, making it easier to move around this strange, unpredictable landscape full of holes and cavities. Though it lives in the water, this species must periodically return to land to mate and lay its eggs. Like all snakes, it is dependent on the temperature of the environment it lives in, and so can only survive in warm waters like these. The Laticauda knows that all the creatures of the reef live very close to or hidden inside the structures that form this bizarre environment. their constant wanderings around the coral reef, it is common for two of these snakes to meet. When that happens, it is important their natural aggression should be inhibited until they recognize each other, and so they embrace and remain still until they have made sure. Once they have checked each other out, they separate and each one goes on his way. But the corals are animals and would not be able to take advantage of the energy from the sun were it not for the fact that inside them live tiny algae called zoosantile. These produce oxygen and carbon and generate the limestone that forms the hard skeleton of the corals. The more sunlight, the more they grow. Oblivious to life of the coral reef, the largest fish in the world returns south in search of the plankton it feeds on. It is the whale shark, a colossus 80 meters in length, peaceful, inoffensive, and curious. It slowly swims around the sea with its mouth open, filtering tiny crustaceans and fish. Its life is a mystery. In fact, it was only discovered by science relatively recently. With him, we are returning to the cold waters where we began our story. From July to the middle of October, the waters of the west of Australia are also visited by the humpback whales, a type of whale 30 tons in weight, which reproduce in the north, then swim south to feed near the Antarctic. On these seasonal migrations, the humpbacked whales swim close to the shore and are easily recognizable from their enormous pectoral fins up to five meters long. These are the longest limbs of any living animal. They are mammals up to 18 meters long and this journey will take them 7,000 miles during which they do not eat. No one knows the reason for this strange behavior. Mm. 
With them we arrive in the dominions of the great white shark, the dark blue waters. And here a tragedy repeated every year is about to occur. The sea lions sense that the breeding season is approaching. Along the coast of southern Australia and Tasmania, they begin to gather near suitable places, playing and swimming with a characteristic skill. The mature males remain aroused for days, rounding up their harems, fiercely defending them from rivals. But in the water, getting overexcited can have fatal consequences. For underwater, they are not alone. The great white sharks like nothing better than a fresh fur seal, warm red meat covered in delicious fat, clean and easy to digest. Despite the name, the fur seals are not seals at all. They belong to a different family, that of the sea lions. One difference is that they have ears, and another, equally obvious one, is that the sea lions use their rear flippers to walk on land like any other mammal. The males are in search of a suitably receptive female but the colony also contains many females impregnated the previous season and which have just given birth. Alongside the adults, we can see the nurseries of the newborn cubs with their dark fur waiting for their mothers to return with food. Among the rocks, they become curious about this newly discovered world, the vast blue horizon that stretches before them. For now, they are only allowed to splash around in the pools left by the retreating tide, but the sea is calling them, and their worst enemy knows it. The diving skills of the adult fur seals in their social nature means that they are difficult to catch by surprise when they are near the coast. But the great white shark comes to its annual rendezvous with the seal cubs. All it needs to do is approach the colony and wait for its chance. This individual is eight meters of sheer fury and almost 2,000 kilos of expert hunter. Though it is a fish, its blood is 10 degrees centigrade warmer than the surrounding water, so its muscles perform better in attack. It detects the electrical fields generated by its victims and is equipped with a system of navigation based on the Earth's magnetic field. Its sense of smell is infallible and the muscles around its eyes are warmer than the others to give it optimum sight. Once more, the White Death has claimed the victim, staining red the blue shroud of the baby sea lion. The sideways movements of the head help the serrated teeth to cut through the young flesh like butter. The black legend of the White Shark has been forged on the basis of exaggerations. Its fame as a monstrous devourer of men is far in excess of the reality, but for decades it has served as an excuse for uncontrolled fishing. 
Their impressive appearance made them the most sought after of all fishermen's trophies. In reality, attacks on humans are rare and strangely many of the victims survive. Like these three mutilated men who now spend their lives killing the white sharks that attack them. Why has such an efficient predator left so many men alive? The myth of the man-eater which began with the reconstruction of the enormous jaw of a now extinct relative of the great white is slowly being replaced by fascination for such a unique animal.